I am Master Ferdinand from Sri Lanka. Presently I am at one of my good friend's residences. There is a lot of flowers in it and a nice environment with sun full, full bloom. I would like to speak on the present Sri Lankan economy, which is very interesting at the present moment. Presently, Mother Lanka's economy is around 75 billion US dollars. Up to 2009, she had only around 25, what you call, around 25 US dollars. So we can see how stagnant she was. And one of the main reasons was the 30-year-old conflict. Soon as the conflict was over, she at once shot up to 75, what you call, billion US dollars in a short period of time. So one can see she has the potential for growth. And if one looks at the growth, keep for example, one may say, this is, uh, one may call it a pipe dream, but it cannot be a pipe dream at some time. If she can double her economic growth in US dollars every three years, 75 billion US dollars will become 150. And in another three years, it will become 300. And in another three years, it will become 600. And in another three years, it will be 1,200 billion. So that means it will be a trillion US dollars, because a 1,000 billion is a, what you call a trillion, according to the American system of analyzing it. So if we have a 1 trillion US dollar economy, we'll keep it another 12 years, well, we'll, ha we'll have a per capita income of around 50,000 US dollars annually. That is keeping the population to around 20 million. Well, that will be the population who will be in Sri Lanka at that period of time because at least 20% of the population presently also is out of the country or we're working in Middle East countries. So we may have a population of 20 million and 1 trillion US dollars divided among 20 million will be around 50,000 US dollars. So that means we'll be on par with the US on the per capita income. So this will be a great achievement for Mother Lanka, especially when one looks at some of the development projects which the Chinese are doing, like the down south, the harbor and the airport and things like that, and the free trade zones. There will be a lot of economic growth down south. And one must not forget, down south only there were the most the two recent, uh, or in the late in the 1970s and the late 1980s, there were uprisings, youth uprisings, and the main cause was, it was unemployment. So this unemployment you can solve to a great extent when there is economic growth. And for economic growth, there has to be high investment. And the Chinese have the money for investment. For example, they say we have taken only around 8 billion US dollars. So the present Prime Minister says if we can get around 15 billion US dollars, this country can be made into a fully developed nation. And this can be easily got because China has given over 20, 30 billion US dollars to countries like Pakistan, even to the United Kingdom. And because the Chinese are making very high investment and they are doing this because they want economic growth even at, to, for their people. <coughs> because at least there has to be an economic growth of 8 to 10 percent in China to keep the momentum going or to keep the Chinese people's aspirations alive. So then one thing even of the Colombo Port City project, it's a $1 billion gift to Sri Lanka, which will bring in a lot of revenue to Mother Lanka because uh, there will be so many nations in it, and nations that people, most of the people eat a vade and a plenty, they too will be investing very high in the project, even countries like India. So the Port City project, though it has been renamed as the Financial City project, will bring in a lot of economic revenue for the country. And in lighter way, they say the Chinese played a major role even in Sri Lanka in the bygone days. They used to sell cloth and they were in the textile industry. And yet, uh, what you call, uh, in lighter way, it is said, they used to take these beautiful Malay girls to bed who were living in those shacks in Malay Street or in Slave Island. And even today, if you uh, stand on the Beira Lake, on the banks of the Beira Lake, one will be able to see the fourth city project with a bird's eye view. So it is said that uh, blood is thicker than water. So this will light away and one may say that the Chinese invest in so much there in the fourth city project, there's a lot of meaning to it. And well, there's economic growth in Mother Lanka. The sons and daughters will have a better quality of life. The million dollar question is how will it be distributed? Well, that is for the governments of the time to decide how this economic growth is to trickle down to society and many people to benefit out of it. On the whole, Mother Lanka is on a threshold of economic growth. 
This may be a pipe dream at the present moment, but it may not turn out to be a pipe dream in another decade. Where the sons and daughters will be looking at a Sri Lankan economy which is a trillion dollar economy and blooming and lot of hoping. There will be problems because when the economy is blooming, the situation known as overheating in economics comes into play. Or in other words, the cost of living rising and they let it slow down. But these are all challenges for the government of that time. With these words, I will close.